Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. Today, we're addressing two questions from Caleb. Number one, what's going on? He's losing complete awareness at times. Number two, how should you proceed with your sleep window if you had a bad night? Nice having you back here. And if you're new to the channel, a uh, big welcome to you. Today, we are talking about two questions from Caleb from episode 109. And uh, we are going to learn about how micro sleep, small episodes of sleep that happen during the day, can be really disruptive and can, can interrupt your nighttime sleep, as well as what you should be doing when you had a bad night. And, and the key thing here is actually, yes, you should stick to your sleep schedule, your sleep window. So uh, before we go on here, as always, nothing here is specific medical advice to anyone, but general thoughts and advice that I hope will be helpful to you, Caleb, and anybody else uh, tuning in here. And um, with that said, let us read this email that I got from Caleb uh, one day ago. So yesterday. So I'm reading here. Um, I'll start off with the micro sleep question. Um, a lot of times during the day, even if I did manage to sleep at night, I am still feeling really tired and weighed down. This makes it much harder for me to resist the temptation to lay down. And now uh, Caleb goes on to let us know that he doesn't have much space, so he's kind of limited to his own bedroom. Uh, a lot of times I do end up sitting up and laying down in my bed. It is strange because even though I'm tired, I don't feel like I'm uh, to the degree that I will fall asleep. I feel like I can lay down but still manage to stay awake not an overwhelming sleepiness. What I notice seems to be happening though is this experience where I feel like I'm maybe nodding off. It's not the same nodding off as when you're sitting up though. For example, like when somebody's riding in the backseat of, of a car uh, during a drive and then waking up after their posture starts to, to slump. It's not like that. It's more like this. I'm laying there and then suddenly for a brief amount of time, I lose all awareness the sound of my TV cuts out and everything goes silent. My awareness of my surroundings suddenly goes out and it seems almost as quickly as it goes, it comes back to me. Kind of frightening, eventually scares me enough that, uh, it, it, that it makes me decide to get out of bed. So a um, couple of things here. Uh, firstly, I just wanna go back to the first sentence. I still feel really tired and way down. Sorry to hear this, obviously, uh, but do know, like, uh, when you had, when you have had insomnia for a while, even if it's just like you haven't had that, that chronic insomnia for years, but even if it's just like you've had insomnia for, for weeks, um, still takes a lot of time before things fall into place. We're talking about the, like, you know, your sleep drive, like your need need for sleep, uh, which you're building up by by doing what you're doing, like limiting time in bed, but also like your circadian rhythm. Um, whereby at certain times during the day we feel more sleep and other times less. That is That circadian process is often very disrupted. So before the two are kind of aligned, it, it, is, it is tricky. You often do feel very tired during the day. So don't, <clears throat> don't be discouraged. Uh, it takes a while before you start sleeping better. Now, um, a lot of things I hear is like uh, it's hard to resist the temptation to lie down. You know what I hear a lot of times in clinic is people tell me like... Um, I ask them like, do you ever nap or do you sleep during the day? They're like, no, I don't. You know, I just sometimes I do like I'm, I, I do lay down and I just rest and I, I, I with my eyes closed, I'm just resting. That always makes me think, you know what? You're lying down, but you feel like you need to close your eyes. I think you might be dozing off. I think you might be sleeping. And uh, and so so you know, keep that in mind. Everyone who's hearing this, like, if you if you're trying to avoid sleeping during the day, that then. Do try to resist the temptation of lying down and closing your eyes. That's kind of a recipe for, you know, t brief episodes of sleep, micro sleep. Now, going back to, uh, you know, more specifically here, um, this episode of like losing all awareness, what's that about? Well, this is one of those like, I can't give medical advice to anyone, but, you know, he hearing this, the first thing I think about is you fell asleep. That's that's probably what happened. Now, why is it that, you know, it, it's not quite, it doesn't feel quite like sleepiness? Well, you know, it may be that same thing that we have with paradoxical insomnia, that, you know, people feel like they're, they're not sleeping at all during the night. They're kind of in this uh, perpetual state of, like, n knowing what's going on. is like hyper-aroused state. And, and it may be a little bit of that, too. Like, you, you fall asleep, but you're still in this kind of 
insomnia comes with this hyper alert hyper vigilant state so it doesn't feel like sleep it's kind of like you lose awareness and then then you're awake again it's like frightening and it and it does get you out of bed so <laughs> a little bit of a good thing there but it, but kind of to answer this question i think this is micro sleep and uh, i think as much as possible good to try to avoid micro sleep because it can disrupt your sleep later on during the day um uh two ways of doing that is kind of like just staying on your toes like really fighting it that's kind of one strategy the other strategy is to you know try to control it in another way like try to actually give yourself an opportunity to sleep in a controlled fashion meaning saying like you know what i'm gonna allow myself to take a 25 minute nap or 20 minute nap or 30 minute nap somewhere during the day and like and like you know kind of you know force your daytime sleep into that nap window hopefully that will make you feel more refreshed and then you won't sleep uh, throughout the rest of the day. You know, that's a second strategy. Uh, okay, good. Uh, let's go on to the second part of this email. The second thing I was wondering about uh, is in regards to uh, sleep restriction. In my case, spending only six hours in bed. If I spend only that a lot of amount of time in bed, I still don't, and I, and I still don't sleep, should I still force myself to stay awake all night and uh, all day until night? I get scared something bad will happen from me doing this. Completely understand this. And, uh, you know, again, not specific medical advice to anyone, but my, my general advice when this happens to patients that I see in clinic is this. You know, the first few nights of, you know, limiting time in bed, and the reason you do this for those of you who are new to this channel, by limiting time in bed and spending more time, like, completely awake, you increase your sleep drive, so you're more sleepy when you go to bed and you sleep better uh, over time. Well, the first few nights often very tricky, often you still have insomnia, you, you sleep like three hours the first night. But yes, you should try to get up in the morning, keep yourself awake all the way to like your earliest allowed bedtime, and and um, and then hopefully night number two, night number three, night number four, or something like that, things start falling into place. And uh, it's very hard, it's very hard, but that is kind of the technique, that's how it works. And typically, you know, if you if you stick with it within a week, two weeks, three weeks, something like that, people typically start feeling uh, much better, sleeping much better. Um, hope this is helpful to you, Caleb. And um, if you have any follow-up questions, please send them to me. Anybody else uh, that uh, has a question regarding sleep, insomnia, anything else, uh, please send me an email at daniel at insomniainsight.co. And I hope to have you back here tomorrow when we'll talk by the way tomorrow we'll talk about like jerky leg movements and muscle twitches and things like that that i've got a lot of questions about lately until then bye bye